Hello dear friends, uh, this is the another case discussion and uh, this is a very interesting case discussion because it uh, teaches you the important thing about uh, the diagnosis because I may understand that uh, instrumentation has become very easy, uh, you can have any rotary file and uh, do an amazing uh, root canal treatment but sometimes uh, the small things like diagnosis makes a very big impact in the success of uh, your uh, endodontic treatment. So uh, this is a case where uh, patient had a sinus opening and uh, uh, the patient was taking orthodontic treatment. When I looked at the x-ray, uh, it looks very fine, isn't it? Like you have the GP, it has reached the working length. But there is a periapical uh, lesion and uh, uh, the patient had a sinus opening. The lesion here is, looks like it is extending both on uh, 3-1 and 4-1. But the patient did not have any pain. It was just the complaint that sinus opening. And uh, when the patient went back to the earlier dentist, uh, the dentist told uh, the patient that uh, the RC is fine and uh, uh, it is most likely related to orthodontic treatment. Now when the patient came to me, looking at the x-ray, I also felt it is uh, proper but uh, I am sure if, if you do not think uh, and just want to give treatment, you would simply do the uh, RCT of the 4-1 because 3-1 looks properly obturated but the lesion is also involving 4-1 and maybe, maybe the 4-1 is also uh, non-vital and you would do the RCT. But that is not how the RC is actually uh, done because before doing root canal treatment you should be very sure that the pulp status is uh, you know uh, is problematic whether it, it may be necrotic or it may be irreversible pulpitis. So the right uh, way to assess this case is first you have to do a vitality of uh, the 4-1 and uh, I found that the 4-1 was uh, vital, it was vital. So the reason is very clear, the, the here one thing is very clear is 4-1 doesn't look like it requires a root canal and uh, maybe the cause is from 3-1 itself. Now if you see on x-ray it is very difficult to diagnose because the x-ray is a two dimensional image of a three dimensional structure so we really don't know uh, and sometimes uh, you have an extra canal on the uh, in the incisors so that is why it is very important that you get it verified. So we have to send it uh, for the CBCT and I did the same because in CBCT you get the complete image. Now the interesting thing here is I did send the image to the CBCT and they sent me a report saying that uh, there is no extra canal in the 3-1 and uh, the lesion is extending to 4-1 and you have to do the uh, most likely 4-1 is the problem. But I. As an endodontist, I knew that that may not be right because 4-1 uh, is vital. So most likely it cannot be there. And I saw the image, I brought the CD, I analyzed it and there was no, uh, uh, although the report said there is no uh, extra canal, which is a lingual one, but I saw very faint line on the lingual side. So, so I saw that faint line and one very important which people have to know is that when you send for CBCT there are specific resolutions for each, each uh, type of lesion. So for example endo resolution is different. So if the CV center doesn't take it in an endo resolution you may miss many of the uh, important findings. So I saw that there was a very faint line and most likely most likely they have uh, not taken endo resolution because I confirmed with uh, on with with a call, and they said yes. And I told them to repeat the endo resolution. So that is also a very important learning lesson. So as you can see in this endo resolution uh, uh, image, there is clear cut one uh, one canal which is missed. But 
is that the reason for the failure because if you analyze if you analyze this situation it looks like the canal is merging with the original canal which is reaching to the working length so if you just if you just do bmp of this missing canal will it heal may or may not we are very very less likely because the exit foramen is only one so unless uh, in any endodontic cases if the main foramen doesn't get obturated then the cases generally tend to fail it may fail that can be that has more chance than you know you may have missed mb2 but mb2 if it is merging with mb1 and mb1 you have treated very well the cases succeed uh, of course you you can always search for mb2 but if your main your main criteria is to reach the working length and a pipal terminus so this was the pre operative uh, lesion it was quite big and um, uh, i decided that even though there is a missed canal but it is merging we will have to again treat the buccal uh, labial canal of this tooth and uh, we did the same we uh, retreated both the canals put calcium hydroxide uh, waited for many weeks uh, when the sinus sinus will disappear within one or two weeks when you put calcium hydroxide but the lesion is very big so i decided i will wait uh, and uh, then i obturated and for now it has been almost 3 months now the patient is asymptomatic and uh, hopefully in we'll do another follow up in uh, some some time and uh, this should uh, hopefully succeed and yes uh, if you are very unsure that whether the adjacent tooth was uh, non vital or maybe you don't have cold test i did a test cavity in the 41 teeth and for that also it was responding so that was a another good indication that 41 was uh, a vital tooth so right now 41 rct was prevented and the lesion is healing hopefully i will have a follow up in another 6 8 months let's see how this case works thank you for watching if you have questions please mention in the comment section